A mother of four was stabbed to death by her possessive ex-lover inside her home while she was on the phone to her sister. Linda Parker, 52, had picked up the receiver in her bedroom when it began ringing only to come face to face with Glenn Gibbons, who had been secretly lying in wait inside the property as her shocked sibling Kathleen listened. Linda said in a trembling voice he's broken in before being overheard adding get out Glenn get out. I'll talk to you if you put the knife down. Kathleen hung up and dialed 999 but grandmother Linda was already dead by the time she and officers reached her home in Hayward. Near Rochdale, Greater Manchester, Linda who had gone home to pick up her dog Toby was stabbed 12 times to the head. Neck and chest Anne was thought to be holding the receiver when she was attacked. It emerged Gibbons, 51 had been keeping the victim's home under surveillance after the couple split a week earlier and was so obsessed with her. He was described as being like her shadow. He'd been stalking her earlier that day at a job center, leaving her in such. First staff booked her a cab home via a back door. He even texted Linda's son after the murder to brag about the killing. At Manchester Crown Court, Gibbons, from Rochdale, showed no emotion as he admitted murder and was jailed for life. The court heard he and Linda had been in a two-year relationship but her family said it led to a change in the victim. Andrew Oburn QC prosecuting said he was paranoid and made her FaceTime him so he would know where she was. She didn't say much on the phone and began to babysit her grandchildren less frequently. Linda's sister Irene described him as being like a shadow to her sister and telephone conversations were put on loudspeaker. Other members of family said the defendant was extremely possessive of Linda if she was not in his company. He wanted to know where she was, where she was going and who with. There were violent rows, usually in drink that would flare up. In spring 2017 Gibbons moved in with Linda but was later seen behaving violently towards her. Police were called but she refused to make a statement. Later Linda rang her eldest daughter Vanessa in hysterics saying Gibbons had dragged her around the room, punched her and pulled her hair whilst he was overheard in the background threatening to hang himself. Subsequently Vanessa got a further call from Linda saying Gibbons had dragged her around the room and punched her while on the phone she heard Linda tell Gibbons she was scared of him and he started crying. The relationship eventually broke up on September 16th when he grabbed Linda by the throat in hit a row in a pump this time. Witnessed by her family, Gibbons moved out of Linda's home and she changed the locks but he rang her son Connor warning he was going to watch his mother when he told it was stalking. He replied, I know that but I am going to do it anyway. I will scar her so that no one else would want her, Mr. Oburn said. On September 25th, she had an appointment at the Job Center but confided in family members that she had reservations about going because he knew of the course and she was concerned he might try and meet her, and that's exactly what he did. She got the bus into Rochdale and he was waiting for her. He tried talking to her. Walking in front of her and stopping her going past, a young woman walked with her to ensure she got to her meeting without any further difficulty. When she got to the meeting place she was frightened and the staff arranged for her to get a taxi from the back of the building. So that she would not be seen by the defendant if he was still in the area. The taxi took her to her mother's house and she was trembling and visibly upset. She was anxious to go back home because her dog Toby was there but she got back unaware the defendant was already waiting for her. Linda's other sister Kathleen had decided to phone only for Linda Parker to inform her that the defendant was in the house. She told her sister he had broken in and when she delivered that message her voice was trembling. She heard her say he should put the knife down and they could talk. Kathleen put the phone down and contacted the police. She was on the phone to them for some time and then ran to her sister's house. But she was too late. Linda was found dead on her bed where she had been on the phone. Gibbons got in through an unlocked kitchen window. He used a knife and chisel butt from a store earlier that day.
He rang his own family saying he had stabbed Linda before handing himself and saying later, I'm devastated it all happened. In a statement Vanessa said, Mum made sacrifices in her own life in order to bring us up. She always put others before herself. She was kind and caring and gentlest person you could hope to meet, a big softy who loved her family so much. We're devastated that she has been taken from us before her time in such an unspeakable way. She still had her whole life ahead of her. She still had dreams and aspirations that she wanted to fulfill. It's hard to comprehend how someone can just come along and take away her life so brutally and viciously. We all constantly relieve the day she died. We can't help but wonder what her final moments were like and whether she suffered. It is difficult to accept she must have been so scared yet none of us was there to help her. Connor is struggling with coming to terms with the fact that Glenn texted him after killing our mother telling him what he had done. Connor was on his way to her mum's house and was unable to do anything to help her mum at that moment. Our mum was scared of the man who did this to her and he knew it. He knew she did not want to be in a relationship with him anymore yet he hounded her and would not leave her alone. He kept contacting family members and even resorted to watching her house when she ended the relationship. On the morning of our mother's death she phoned all of her children to say how scared and worried she was that Glenn may follow her. She knew from what Glenn had told Connor that Glenn may be watching her house. We all feel guilty that we were not there to save our mum. She ended the relationship as she was unhappy and she knew Glenn's abuse was gradually getting worse. She was happy to start getting her life back again. In mitigation defense counsel Andrew Jeffries said they fought but tended to make up, although there was no excuse for this violence. He is from a close family himself, but ordering him to serve a minimum of 22 years the judge Mr. Justice Simon Bryan said your relationship had been volatile. And you were extremely possessive and controlling of her. You constantly wanted to know where she was. Where she was going and who she was with and on a number of occasions you were violent to her and she was scared of you. To the extent that she were in love with Linda it was an unhealthy and controlling love. It is clear you are not willing to let Linda go. The facts of this case illustrate the tragedy of the loss of a life set against a sadly all too familiar backdrop of a history of domestic violence where one partner finally manages to end the relationship only for their ex-partner to be unwilling or unable to accept that the relationship is at an end leading to a confrontation and fatal injuries to the victim for that is what Linda is a victim of your criminal conduct Freaks out.